Have you ever wondered why modern Australia is already considered the most dangerous place on Earth? Spiders that can kill you, venomous snakes everywhere, giant crocodiles lurking in the water. But what if I told you that's absolutely nothing compared to what this continent used to be? Because 25 million years ago, Australia was literally a walking nightmare. A place where even the birds were professional assassins and where you could be devoured by something that would make you never look at a kangaroo the same way again. We're talking about the Miocene Epoch, a time when Australia was definitively separating from Antarctica and beginning its journey northward. But unlike today, which is basically a giant desert with some cities on the edges, Australia of this period was a dense, humid, tropical forest. Imagine the Amazon but populated by monsters that would make T-Rex look like a poodle. And the most terrifying part? Many of these animals were relatives of the cute creatures we know today. So prepare yourself to discover how evolution can be, let's say, creative. This isn't just another extinct animals video. This is a journey into a world where nightmares came to life. A continent where every step could be your last. And where the food chain was so brutal that even herbivores were terrifying. Today we're exploring the prehistoric Australia that would make horror movie directors weep with envy. Trust me, after this video, you'll never complain about a spider in your bathroom again. Let's start with something that technically still exists today, but back then was a true killing machine, the Dromornis. If you think modern emus are problematic, imagine a bird 3 meters tall and weighing 600 kilograms. That's right, 600 kilograms. To give you an idea, that's heavier than a polar bear. But it gets worse. This giant had a beak that paleontologists affectionately nicknamed the Bone Breaker. Not because it ate bones, well, it did eat bones, but because it could literally split bones like they were dry twigs. And before you think, well, at least it couldn't fly, I have bad news. It was faster than a horse. So no, running wouldn't have been an option. These terror birds had legs like tree trunks and could maintain speeds that would make a racehorse jealous. Their stride was so long that a single step covered more ground than most people's entire body length. And here's a fact that will give you nightmares. They hunted in packs. Imagine a group of birds the size of a rhinoceros chasing you through the forest. This makes Hitchcock's The Birds look like a romantic comedy. But what made Dromornis truly terrifying wasn't just its size or speed. It was its intelligence. Brain scans of fossilized skulls show these creatures had complex neural structures, suggesting they were capable of sophisticated hunting strategies. They could plan ambushes, coordinate attacks, and even use tools like rocks to crack open particularly tough prey. So not only were they fast, strong, and massive, but they were also smart enough to outsmart almost anything they encountered. But if you thought about taking refuge in the water, well, think again. Because waiting for you there was the Quincana also known as the crocodile that forgot it should stay in water. This guy was six meters long and had long legs, yes, long legs, that allowed it to run after you on dry land. And when I say run, I don't mean that awkward trot that crocodiles do today. I'm talking about horse-level speed through dense forest terrain. Its jaws were so powerful they could split a tree in half. Literally. Paleontologists have found bite marks from these crocodiles on fossilized trees. Trees that, by the way, were about 50 centimeters in diameter. That's like biting through a telephone pole made of solid wood. Their teeth were designed like serrated daggers, perfect for slicing through both flesh and vegetation. And unlike modern crocodiles that rely on the death roll, Quincana could tear its prey apart with pure jaw strength alone. And the most disturbing part? They were intelligent. Studies show they had proportionally larger brains than modern crocodiles which means they were probably capable of elaborate hunting strategies. They could track prey for days, set up ambushes near water sources, and even use the environment to their advantage. Some fossil evidence suggests they might have even worked together, with one Quincana driving prey toward another waiting in ambush. So not only were they fast, strong crocodiles on land, but they were also tactical predators. And since we're talking about prehistoric nightmares, how about giving this video a like? because you're going to need all the luck possible after what's coming next. Speaking of which, let's talk about the distant relative of the koala that decided to become a war tank, the Diprotodon. Imagine a wombat the size of a hippopotamus. 
three meters long, two tons of pure muscle and attitude. Oh, but it was herbivorous, right? You might be thinking. Yes, it was herbivorous. But have you ever seen an angry hippo? This giant had teeth that grew continuously and claws that could destroy entire trees while searching for leaves. And here's the scary part. They were territorial. Imagine walking peacefully through the forest and suddenly encountering a mountain of fur and muscle that decides you're invading its area. Their territorial behavior was so aggressive that they would charge at anything that moved within their domain, regardless of size. Even other diprotodons would engage in brutal fights that could last for hours. But the worst part wasn't even the size. The worst part was that they had such an acute sense of smell that they could detect you from kilometers away. There was no hiding from these giants. Their nostrils were specifically adapted to process scents from incredible distances, and they could distinguish between different types of threats. Once they caught your scent, they would pursue you relentlessly until you left their territory, or until they made sure you'd never threaten their domain again. And if you thought about climbing a tree to hide, well, waiting for you up there was the Wanambi, a constrictor snake nine meters long. To give you an idea of how absurdly large this is, it was bigger than any current anaconda. And unlike anacondas, which are semi-aquatic, this one was completely terrestrial and arboreal. It had evolved specifically to hunt in the forest canopy, with specialized scales that gave it incredible grip on tree branches. Its body was so perfectly adapted for arboreal life that it could move through trees like a liquid shadow. It had a particularly cruel hunting strategy. It would remain motionless for days waiting for something to pass underneath. When that happened, it would simply drop on top of its prey and, well, you can imagine the rest, the most disturbing part. Fossils show it had absurd flexibility able to bend its body in ways that defy physics. Imagine a snake that can contort itself like it's made of liquid, wrapping around its prey in impossible angles, while slowly crushing every bone in their body. But what made Wanambi truly terrifying was its patience and precision. Unlike modern constrictors that kill relatively quickly, Wanambi would slowly increase pressure over hours, keeping its prey alive but completely immobilized. It had specialized sensors along its body that could detect the slightest heartbeat, allowing it to adjust its grip to maintain perfect pressure. The prey would remain conscious throughout the entire process, unable to move or escape, while the snake methodically prepared its meal. And now we arrive at the ultimate nightmare, the Procoptodon, or as paleontologists like to call it, the kangaroo that ate meat. Two and a half meters tall, muscles that would make a bodybuilder cry with envy and a face that looked like it had been drawn by someone who had just watched a horror movie. But here's what will really give you nightmares. They had a claw on their middle finger. Yes, literally the middle finger. That could grow up to 15 centimeters long. And they knew exactly how to use it. Imagine a kangaroo that instead of fleeing by hopping when it feels threatened, decides your dinner. And it has speed, strength, and a natural blade to turn you into sushi. These weren't the gentle hoppers we know today. They were apex predators with a hopping gait that could cover incredible distances in seconds. Their powerful hind legs weren't just for mobility. They were weapons capable of delivering kicks that could shatter bones. What made Procoptodon even more terrifying was its hunting behavior. Unlike modern kangaroos that are primarily grazers, these giants were opportunistic predators that would hunt anything they could catch. They had forward-facing eyes like a predator, giving them excellent depth perception for tracking prey. Their massive chest muscles powered arms that could grapple with prey while their deadly middle claw did the finishing work. They were essentially nature's version of a hopping assassin with built-in weapons. But let's not forget about the smaller terrors that made life in prehistoric Australia a constant nightmare. The Megalania, a monitor lizard that grew up to seven meters long, was basically a Komodo dragon on steroids. It had venomous saliva that could kill prey through septic shock, and its bite force was strong enough to crush the bones of even the largest herbivores. These massive lizards were ambush predators that could remain perfectly still for hours before striking with lightning speed. Then there was the Thylacolio, the marsupial lion that had the strongest bite force of any known mammal. Despite being a marsupial, 
It had evolved into a perfect killing machine with retractable claws like a cat and teeth designed for slicing through flesh and bone. It was an ambush predator that would leap from trees onto unsuspecting prey, using its powerful forelimbs to grapple while its massive canine teeth delivered a killing bite. Even the largest herbivores weren't safe from these aerial assassins. The prehistoric Australian waters weren't any safer, populated by crocodiles that made modern saltwater crocs look like pets. The Palamnarchus was a freshwater crocodile that grew up to five meters long and had a skull designed specifically for crushing bones. Unlike modern crocodiles that rely on drowning their prey, this giant had jaws so powerful it could kill with a single bite. Its teeth were like railroad spikes, perfectly designed for puncturing the thick hides of giant herbivores. And if you thought the skies were a safe refuge, think again. The Argentavis, while not native to Australia, had relatives there that were equally terrifying. These giant birds of prey had wingspans that could reach seven meters and could soar at altitudes where they could spot prey from incredible distances. They were like flying death, capable of diving at speeds that would make a fighter jet jealous. Their talons were like meat hooks, and their beaks could tear through hide like paper. But here's the plot twist that nobody expected. All these monsters were driven to extinction not by a global catastrophe, not by volcanoes or meteors, but by a small climate change and the arrival of the first humans. That's right. Our ancestors arrived in Australia about 50,000 years ago, and within a few thousand years all these giants simply disappeared. It's one of the most dramatic extinction events in Earth's history, and humans were right at the center of it. Some scientists believe it was coincidence that climate change alone was responsible. Others say it was excessive hunting by early humans. But there's a third theory that's even more terrifying. That our ancestors were so efficient at hunting that they managed to eliminate predators that had dominated the continent for millions of years. Think about that for a moment. Early humans with primitive tools were more dangerous than giant carnivorous kangaroos and land crocodiles. The evidence for human involvement is actually quite compelling. Fossil records show that the extinctions happened in waves following the same pattern as human migration across the continent. Areas where humans arrived first saw extinctions happen first. It's as if our ancestors were like a plague that swept across the continent, eliminating everything in their path. The fact that these massive predators couldn't survive human arrival says something profound about our species' capacity for environmental impact. What makes this even more remarkable is that these early humans didn't have modern weapons or technology. They had spears, fire, and most importantly, intelligence and cooperation. They could coordinate hunts, use fire to drive animals into traps, and plan complex strategies that even the smartest prehistoric predators couldn't counter. In a way, the human brain was the ultimate weapon, more dangerous than any claw, fang, or crushing bite. The speed of these extinctions also tells us something about the fragility of ecosystems. These animals had survived ice ages, volcanic eruptions, and massive climate shifts over millions of years. But they couldn't survive a few thousand years of human presence. It shows how interconnected these ecosystems were. When the humans eliminated key species, entire food webs collapsed like dominoes. The Australia we know today is just a shadow of what it once was. But perhaps the most chilling aspect of this story is what it tells us about ourselves. We like to think of early humans as primitive, struggling to survive in a hostile world. But the evidence suggests the opposite. We were the hostile force that the world struggled to survive. We were so effective at changing environments that we could eliminate apex predators that had ruled for millions of years. In a way, we were the ultimate invasive species. So the next time you complain about a spider or snake in Australia, remember... You could be sharing the continent with giant assassin birds and carnivorous kangaroos. The Australia of today, as dangerous as it seems, is actually a peaceful paradise compared to what it once was. Those cute kangaroos hopping around? Their ancestors were armed killers. Those lazy koalas sleeping in trees. Their relatives were massive territorial tanks that could smell you from miles away. And if you enjoyed this trip into prehistoric nightmares, leave that like. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Because next week we're talking about a place that makes prehistoric Australia look like a theme park. The Amazon from 10 million years ago. You won't believe what they found there. 
creatures so bizarre and terrifying that they make everything we talked about today seem like cuddly pets. Trust me, you don't want to miss that journey into the ultimate prehistoric horror show.